Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. What there is to tell you is I was recently working on a vault door project. This is a steel vault door made in dollhouse scale. And uh, because the back of this thing is super flat and the sides are uh, on a taper, in order to hold on to this, I chucked it into my magnetic chuck. I screwed it up multiple times. I harmed my magnetic chuck. I carved into it. I marred it. Here is the surface. It's so not beautiful right now. It's just, yeah, it's an unhappy thing. So, yeah, it's got some, it is still usable, but when my stuff isn't properly taken care of like this, I would tend to avoid it just because like, it's not pretty. It's not that, like I'm not gonna use it because it's not pretty, but that should be addressed. Now, normally if you wanted to address that, you could do a surface grind. It was a great way to get things nice and flat. I do not have a surface grinder, but I have a tool post grinder, which is a surface grinder for the lathe. And I'm gonna set it up and I'm gonna try and grind that face flat. We'll see if I can do it. All right, that seems like a pretty good resurfacing that I've achieved. Um, I am going to clean up a bit and then bring this uh, over to the workbench where I'm gonna do a lap. Now, when I say I'm gonna take a lap, I don't mean that I'm a gym teacher giving one piece of advice. No, I mean, I'm gonna use this lapping plate and get this superiorly flat. Oh, right, let me turn it back off again. Now we have it off of the lathe. We can bring it over this way. Then we can wipe off all that metal. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to put down a uh, cutting oil base and then I'm gonna put some 400 grit on top of that. I am going to uh, hold me a What's nice about this is uh, when I bought this, it wasn't necessarily perfectly flat to my machine. It was pretty close, but that last grind probably brought it within uh, a really nice tolerance for the actual spindle of my lathe.
All right. So I have a little tiny bit of silvered metal here in the middle. Honestly, I think this is like within a micron or two of flat. So uh, that's sufficient for me. I am, uh, I'm getting diminishing returns on this lapping project. My lapping plate is working beautifully. Um, and the surface of this is beautiful. I am gonna just put a metal polish on it on the lathe and bring it all to the same, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. That is a uh, that is a right and properly dressed magnetic chuck. It is flat within tolerances that I need. And all of this stuff worked out pretty ah, well. That's nice again. And I want to use nice tools. And it's nice. It's nice to use nice tools. Uh, so I'm going to put this in neutral. I'm going to put it away. Oh, right. And I'm about to put the, th the uh, six straw chuck back on here. And there's one more bit of lathe maintenance I've been meaning to get to. By the way, here we go. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty enough for 53 pounds. Here we go. Mm -mm. My six straw chuck sits on the workbench right now. And uh, I bought it new a couple of years ago and it's still got a tiny bit of stiff stiffness to it. And I think that I can remove that stiffness. I think it just needs a thorough cleaning. So I'm gonna take it all apart and put it back together again. That'll be the second part of today's lathe maintenance. Let's go over there, shall we? This is the meaty business end of this kind of chuck. It's called a scroll chuck, because that is a spiral. And those spirals as they turn, bring the jaws to the inside. Let us degrease all this stuff and uh, go from there. Listen, I, uh, I can't stress enough here how important the uh, parts washer has been to my shop practice. It has allowed me to keep a lot of things much cleaner because I don't have to degrease them. The degreasing aspect is humongous here with this thing.
I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This thing spins much better. I'm gonna put it back in the lathe and then I'm gonna true set it for, well, I'll show you what I'm doing. I like this method of putting on a D1 slash uh, whatever lathe chuck is that uh, I get the top one semi-secured and then I go in and do opposites. So this type of lathe is called a true set lathe chuck. And what that means is that um, this chuck can be set to a very high amount of accuracy. And I will show you. Um, yeah. So I happen to know that this ER40 chuck has been built to a very, because I've used it a lot, I, it has been built to a nice high specification. So I'm gonna take my round reading off of there. All right, so. There she is. That's a couple of tenths. Uh, the thing about a true set chuck is um, there's a knack to it. I don't quite have the knack. Uh, it takes me a while, but I've gotten it now to within a couple of ten thousandths. Literally, I've got it within about five microns of uh, being perfectly... Uh, round um, with I've got about five microns of run out here with the ER40 collet in and that's great because that's what these chucks that's these I use these chucks for that yeah those guys and um, for sensitive work on this lathe uh, with a true set like this uh, you can setting it for one diameter doesn't necessarily mean you've set it for every diameter but for the most part, it stays within like a couple of thou of round. Um, so I don't have to really worry about it. And if I'm doing something super precise, I just redo the true set for that diameter. And then that's repeatable. Look at how lovely my lathe is now. It's like I got a brand new lathe chuck, um, which I'm delighted by. And also... Uh, Two brand new lathe chucks. Look at that, right? My magnetic chuck looks beautiful. It's very, it's lovely and flat again, and it's no longer abused from my impatience. The six jaw chuck now spins really freely. Okay, let's check this out. Oh, right, it doesn't spin freely because I haven't done it. Hold on. There's a... I'm noticing a little bit of a stiff spot, but that's not in the roundness. That's actually in the thickness. And I don't know if that's something I'm going to be able to shift. It'll also wear in as the uh, three spur gears that drive the scroll chuck uh, work. I think I've covered all the esoteric information you need about lathes today. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this. The My favorite part about what happened today was 
honing a couple of microns out of the internal round of the scroll part of my scroll chuck. That was really neat. I didn't know I could do that in here. I'm going to make sure I have some good honers because I think my smallest one just shat the bed. Um, all right. Thanks, you guys. See you next time. <laughs>